Let's test the fuel pressure on this. It should be between 56 and 60 PSI. Basically, you're just taking the fuel line off, you're putting the pressure gauge in line, and you're firing it up, that's it. It's nothing special. It's just a, I think it was a Craftsman fuel pressure gauge. You know, I do know that there are kits that look like they have a million pieces. I don't know if any of those fit. In my personal experience, every time I've bought in like a kit that had a bunch of different things, I don't use like 99% of it. For these four pieces that I needed for this was 25 bucks. This fitting that's on here that typically goes on a Schrader valve, like in your car, a lot of times vehicles will have a Schrader valve built in, built? Built in to the line so you can just screw it in super fast. We don't have the luxury with this. This Schrader valve fitting turns out to be quarter inch flare. The quarter inch flare fitting. So to get at it, we want to take this cross brace out, 10 millimeter. Here we're looking at, this is the fuel rail. You got one, two, three injectors. And this is where the fuel comes in. This fitting, you don't technically need any tools, although it's hard to get off without like a little clip. If your ski is running rough and you just want to quickly tell if it's bad gas, you can pop this off right here and spray it into a container. Pinch both sides and then just try to get that tooth to pop off with the pick. There's a tooth down on the bottom and then there's one on the top. There's a couple O-rings. You want to make sure that those O-rings are good. Getting this hose off of this fitting can be a, a real pain in the butt. Um, usually it almost feels like it's welded on there, not coming off. You need to take like a pick tool. This is used for doing radiator hoses. I mean, ideally if I had the same tool only smaller, it would be better for this, but this works. And the trick, you gotta just, you gotta get it in between the rubber and the plastic to get it off. Right now, it's not pressurized, so it's not leaking, but if this is pressurized, it's gonna spray everywhere, so make sure you got like a rag and you're not spraying gas in your eyes or whatever. And now we're gonna tie the fuel gauge in line with this and this. Now that we got that hose hooked up, be careful, you know, you might spring a leak. It is, it's some good pressure, right? 60 pounds. So we'll wake up the ski. And as soon as I put the key on, <laughs> it'll prime that pump. And we're looking for 60 PSI. All good. How do we know that the pressure is good? We can disconnect this. Obviously, it's still pressurized. My button on the side of here doesn't work anymore. It's just old. But normally, you can press that and, and release the pressure. Make sure you the key's off when you take this apart, because if the key's on, it's just gonna spray everywhere. You don't want that shit. Unfortunately, I can't really relieve the pressure to the spray a little bit. But it is what it is, man. This ski's got a bunch of things that I need to fix on it. I gotta get the ride plate off because it's rotten, and I gotta do the IBR motor, so. There's a few things that I gotta handle with this ski to get it back up in order. I'm gonna try to do videos of all that, so if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff, you know, you know what to do.